Okay. Hello, everybody. We are here uh, talking a bit about different ways of modeling, which are not console, um, and a bit of what is my experience with uh, modeling of absorption. I'm using Open Modelica and discussing with the guys of the uh, Multiphysics channel, we realize how not everybody uh, knows much about the tool. So we thought to have uh, this first presentation in which we show not only what we're trying to solve, but also how, so a bit how uh, Open Modelica looks. And uh, in particular, how it can be helpful to trade off um, the features of local and global uh, modeling of absorption. Uh, firstly, a little bit about me. I am Emanuele. I am um, an energy engineer. I, uh, during my education, uh, travel quite a bit. Uh, first in Turin, then in Barcelona, afterwards in Milan, and only, let's say, more or less recently, uh, I would like to say recently, but it's actually uh, more than two years ago, moved to Dubentorf at EMPA for my PhD. I became famous during the years for falling asleep in the worst possible moments during classes, uh, during fights, uh, and normally also do it after lunch, but let's hope today that, that won't happen. And if you look at the two truths and one lie about me, you can also say I might uh, define as very original uh, and full of inventive. But let's go to the uh, serious topic today. So sometimes you have problems uh, that you want to solve in which all the scales matter a bit. Um, for example, what I've been working on during the last, last years is um, characterizing and modeling uh, absorption into exchangers. And from a system point of view, we are interested in the uh, global performance of such a device. But actually, um, as uh, these are special heat exchangers which are integrated with um, microporous materials on, their, on the surface of their fin, what defines the overall performance is the uh, behavior of, at a microscopic scale of this uh, absorbent material. So you cannot really neglect. So one way to face the problem is to build your whole heat exchanger and characterizing, and that um, allows you to have you know a full um, response of that of that component. But if you would just want to take decisions in the early stage of your design, this might not be the way to go. So of course, what you can do is to model. Um, but one thing is to model in detail what happens inside your material, it can be coatings or beads. Uh, if there are a few of them, and if the boundary conditions are more or less predefined. Uh, and in that case, you can do a uh, computation full dynamic uh, analysis, and that it's surely great. But if instead you want to scale up the problem and simulate the whole heat exchanger, uh, you might not want to build a, such a big and complex model. Also, it will be probably uh, very slow. Um, so what we would need in this case is a more lightweight model uh, in which the level of detail you can select according to your actual need and a practical, practical environment to do so. Uh, we saw in Open Modelica the right tool uh, to do this kind of uh, modeling, let's say, in between scales for uh, three different reasons. The first one being it is open source. That means it's not only uh, uh, lots of savings from for you or your company or your institution, but also you can grant universal access to uh, your model and you can share the results more easily. It is object oriented and this is quite handy when you want to build a lot of a kind of a complex systems and then do explorations. So you can declare things and then create instances and this will turn into something very handy as we will see later on. And last but not least, uh, it is declarative. Uh, which means we don't have to specify how the process is solved, we just put the um, solving equations and Modelica will solve it for us. And that also kind of helps when it, we come to um, um, changing some details of our simulation because we don't have to change the whole solving alg algorithm. Uh, so now I prepare a small example to show you a bit how uh, the, um, the Open Modelica looks. Uh, so that's how the editor, which is one of the way to access Open Modelica as an environment, uh, looks like when you enter. 
So you can load some models. Here I loaded a, a simple example um, in which you uh, have a heat source, some resistors, and some capacitors. Very easy and clean so that you can see a bit what is inside. So once you have components, as I, I was saying, you may have created the um, heat capacitors and the resistor. To add them, you can just drag and drop and uh, um, yeah, connect them at your will. Let's say like that. Um, yeah, and uh, there might be some parameters to specify. So once you build your basic components, it's really easy to build systems. And that's why this is a classical system level uh, tool for design. Now, what I wanted to show is a bit how this object oriented thing looks like. Uh, so we have some components. Uh, in this case, we have a general heat capacitor. In, and inside that, we don't really have to define how the, the, the system behaves, but just what is its main task. So it will have some capacity, some temperature, some um, thermal conductivity. But if you see in the equation, there is not really defined how it will be solved. And instead, uh, you can extend this model and then specify what are your solving equations. And this inherits all the, the properties and the specifications of his father, in this case, the general heat capacitor. Uh, in this case, I have two uh, different uh, capacitors with two different um, equations. They look exactly the same, except for uh, one uses a fake um, capacity that I, that I invented just for, for the pleasure of showing you. So uh, once you simulate this, you have in the plotting perspective, um, the quantities you just simulated. In this case, I plotted here the temperatures of different components. Uh, I set an alarm for when the temperature goes over uh, 50, 95 degrees. And uh, I also, I'm also showing the capacity. From the plotting perspective, it's also quite easy to rerun models. For example, you can change here your capacity that I set with the parameter. And if you rerun, you see immediately the effect of it. Now I will reset it as it was in the beginning. Um, so how to build, we said this is quite helpful if you want to um, just slightly modify your system and redeclare things. So one thing we can do is to create the exact same model, just changing the, um, the capacitors, for example. Uh, and this can be done just simply creating a new model, which I will call my new system. Uh, and we insert it in the class CPU cooling. And that's pretty much it. And you can simply insert your whole system. And this is going to be now appearing inside here. And in this case, for example, I can set the uh, capacity equal to, uh, let's say, 0 0.1. And we will have our, our system defined uh if i can see the simulate button okay no that's you have uh, normally to define some parameters for the simulation let's say the running time um, one thing i find quite a bit annoying especially in the beginning is the compilation time it takes a while even though it doesn't really depend on the complexity of the of your problem so it's not a big deal if you're simulating big stuff but for small ones, sometimes it can be a bit annoying. While from the plotting perspective, you can just re-simulate without building the model. So basically what does here is like structure, defining the solution and preparing all the system to be solved. Uh, once the simulation is completed, you, we will have new results. Here we will have new temperatures. Uh, yeah, as you see, the response here is much quicker. Uh, yeah, and just for comparison, we can put all of them and see the difference with respect to this, quite different. And this was very fast. We didn't have to rebuild the whole system just to uh, recall it somehow. What you can do from here without having to change the whole system is just to redeclare some of the, of the components in the um, original system some of the components were called as replaceable. And that will allow us to replace them in, in when they are called somewhere else. 
in this case, uh, I prepare already for brevity a little bit. So I'm, I'm, I'm already clearing all the component, all the capacitors inside with this new, um, with this new um, capacitor definition. And so you just basically add your um, redeclare the unit you want to declare and the, the component inside your system. And uh, having done that, you can re-simulate. And this time, uh, yeah, we will have a different, different solution for that. Um, now, uh, while this runs, uh, I can show you also another thing that I found uh, quite useful, which is handling uh, simulations or uh, regarding both um, simulation options or parameters, which is um, which is the um, Python packages uh, on Python, and uh, so basically it looks like so you can run it from whatever uh, Python interface you prefer. Here is in Jupyter in Jupyter uh, notebook. So it's a very simple it's a classical package that you can call. And it will allow to build your model. You just had to call it from somewhere. And you have also to call the modelic library. Normally, it's, it's uh, the standard library that comes with the software, which anyway, um, it's worth maybe to mention that it contains a lot of components already. So you don't have to build your own in case you don't want to do anything special. Here you see a, a mechanic component, a fluid, but also electrics, and in general, Online, there are a lot of like cool libraries which are free, and you can readily use. Uh, so let's go back to our one Python. So what does uh, what this does is uh, manage your simulations basically. Uh, here I um, try to read my uh, simulation options and the parameters of the of the model, and I can easily redefine them. I just create a string and I said set this, simula this simulation object as such. And ta -da, it is changed from one second to 100 and uh, yeah, from two milliseconds to 20 milliseconds. Basically, I can do the same things with the parameters so I can really modify things. And this is also helpful if you have your own database of properties, for example, you have it somewhere uh, on your laptop or online, you can just use. The, your favorite interface of Python to read them, and then you can just uh, insert them in an automatic way. What I'm doing here is changing the capacity, let's say in a range from one to 10, and see what happens to the alarm time. So let's say the characteristic time that I said I'm interested in to look at. Uh, so the time that takes to go to um, 95 degrees. And here is very trivial, I'm just showing the times as they change with the, with the capacity. So that's very helpful for me. And uh, it really allows me to do cool stuff, uh, which I can show you uh, later on, probably also more in detail in another episode. Um, but if you really want to learn, I would say there are three things I suggested to do. First, to go on the Open Modelica project website. There are a lot of information. It's a nice project like really science uh, academia based, let's say, uh, but with a lot of applications also for industry. And there are a lot of companies that are using that. Some of them are really experts, uh, like TLK Energy and TLK Thermo. I can recommend their yearly course that uh, really was amazing for me to start. In less than a week, I was really able to manage the tool. And something a bit in between is like, as always, videos. This is a spoken tutorial. You can uh, look for Open Modelica on this website, and there is some helpful, let's say, starting material. That will be more or less it for the introduction of the tool. And um, instead, now a bit of spoiler, let's say, of how we use it. So what, uh, why we chose it in the beginning is to enable multi-scale, right? So have you seen you just drag and drop objects, and each of them is defined in a certain way with certain characteristic equations. But that means that each of them is also a lumped object. So you can have, for example, if we have this absorbent material, just one equation uh, for the heat and mass balance, and one heat resistance, transfer resistance, one mass transfer resistance, and so on. 
the particularity is, for example, this specific case can be quite tricky uh, as absorption phenomena is quite complex and it is entangled with this heat and mass transfer. So are we actually able to do that? Because with a lamp approach is not really the, like, at least in theory, the best. Some spoiler from the image below, we are able to do that and uh, we are quite uh, happy about it. We will show maybe another time a bit more detail how we achieve that. And then once you have your model validated and this I guarantee it can work if you, let's say, try hard enough, uh, then you can really play with it and connect it how you want. And this is helpful for both system level, uh, say designers, uh, so you can change your boundary conditions, change the num number of particles, the, um, the characteristic of, let's say, from that you find online of some materials, but also for material developers, as you can uh, really investigate more what, what would happen if your material would set would be in a real device and see what is the limiting factors, for example, if it was uh, how much water it's absorbing or when, or if it is uh, may, maybe a matter of heat conduction. So you can really tailor your material and compare it to, let's say, more reference uh, reference ones. That would be it for today. Uh, so three key things that I would like you to remember, uh, hopefully out, out of this. So first is that you can actually combine features of local and global modelings. There are tricks to do that. Uh, so don't be don't limit yourself. You can really um, tailor your, your degree of, of uh, scale. And second thing that Open Modelica is quite a nice uh, environment to do so. You can create your objects and play with it. And then you can explore your options. Uh, that means, for example, using OM Python is really a nice, nice option to do that. For, to do that. And uh, with that, I close. And uh, yeah, I thank uh, European Commission that is mainly funding uh, the projects I'm working on, uh, which is ICO uh, for absorption cooling, but that does, this is not the end. We are also working on absorption, uh, heat, seasonal heat storage and uh, CO2 capture from point sources. And maybe you will find more about that one another time. And uh, Thank you for your attention, and I'm very open, open and glad to receive questions. So, the numerical scheme, or can you change it when you're solving? Uh, not really. It's, so, it's kind of a black box from oh. uh, that point of view. Uh -huh. But I know there are some ways uh, you just need a deeper understanding of the software itself. Uh -huh. I, I know of people that do that. Uh -huh. uh, but I would not know how to do it myself. It's not like a user level. Thing. Sure, sure. And does is how easy is it to parallelize? To parallelize? Yeah. Well, again, uh, that's something I'm not really interested into right now because okay. I wasn't mainly focused on, let's say, trying if I was able to use such a tool for this kind of problem mm -hmm. more than actually like improving the computational performances, which is somehow the next step because our goal is to upscale sure. thing, right? Sure, sure. So maybe, let's say, in a few months or one year, maybe I'm able to answer these questions. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so basically, the reason I'm asking is, um, have you tried like solving flow through, a, let's say, Poiseuille flow, standard Poiseuille flow? Um, no. No, you haven't tried. OK, I just no, want to know no. how much time it would take. So. No, I, I wouldn't know that. Oh, all right. OK. Anyhow. OK. OK. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you for asking.